Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone's Season 4 Episode 16 to see how accurate all the signs of technology in this anime really are. <laughs> Remote work is the best. I have never met an engineer that would prefer to be in the office full time. I grew to like it because it's a nice change of scenery and on the very rare occasion it is necessary to go to the office because you're learning a new program and it is more of a classroom environment so it's easier to ask questions in person versus over teams in that example. Nine times out of ten an engineer will get to the office, open their laptop, put their headphones on and then get started on their day. Engineers are not typically known for being social butterflies. For collaboration purposes, it is so much easier to solve problems if you can share your screen over Teams instead of walking over to the person, describing what's going on, and then walking back to your computer to realize, oh, there's so much more wrong, and what they said to fix it isn't actually working. Call over Teams, share your screen with a group, and you can solve the issues in real time. It is so much more efficient than being in person. It is very difficult to find a legitimate reason to be in the office five days a week. I suppose if you're a new employee, then it makes more sense because you're effectively a student at that point. And if you're a student, then perhaps it would be better to be around your mentor a little bit longer. That is painful work. A Morse code fax machine? Wait, man, why is Gen being punished? First, they need to communicate how large the grid is, X by Y axis size, and then one at a time say the unit number if it's colored in or not. If the grid is 100 by 100, then they have 10,000 data points to transmit via Morse code. Once all the information is transmitted, it also needs to be understood in how to interpret it. Otherwise, you may as well be speaking Spanish to someone else in Japan, hoping they can pick up a few things here and there. God bless the internet, there's no need for that anymore. I was just about to comment how well that lady with the, the clock forehead was handling the situation. If you woke me up after 3,000 years, I, I would have so many questions that needed to be answered. The first one being, what just happened? This anime does a very good job of answering the audience questions through the fourth wall. The best example of the storytelling technique that I have seen is Death Note. I mean, goodness gracious, every single episode is literally the audience asking Light a question and then they're answering it via Ryuk or the actual Death Note rules and the Shinigami is learning about these rules as well. That's, this is one of my favorite animes of all time and I see a lot of similarities between how they break the fourth wall here. The circuit is glass. That uh, glass is not a good conductor of electricity. In fact, it's actually an insulator, especially at room temperature and while dry. Unlike metals, glass doesn't have free moving electrons that can carry an electric current. Glass has very tightly bound atoms, making it really difficult for the electric charge to move through them. That doesn't make any sense to me, suggesting that the circuit is glass, unless there's something wrong with the translation, maybe from Japanese to the English subtitles. As far as the diamond goes, yes, diamonds can be used in a type of battery, though it's not in the traditional lithium ion batteries, it's more so the well, the technology is still under development. I don't believe it's easily accessible to anyone in the public. And it's a, I think they're, they're like nuclear diamond batteries. It's, it's been a while since I've seen this, but they're called beta voltaic batteries. 
As shown here in Dr. Stone, this is not how that technology works. The diamond battery uses radioactive isotopes like carbon-14 to emit high-energy electrons, also called beta particles. A man-made carbon-12 diamond would surround the radioactive material, and as the beta particles would pass through that diamond, they generate a small electric current. Here's where it gets interesting. These diamond batteries can last thousands of years depending on the radioactive isotope that's used. There are no moving parts, which makes it very stable and durable, and they're very safe. Anyone can handle diamonds with their bare hands with no risk of radiation poisoning. They're very good for low energy devices, such as sensors or medical implants, but not so much for phones or cars. NASA expressed a very large interest in this technology for deep space missions where long-lasting power sources are critical. Xeno worked for NASA, and I think Y-Man is on the moon? It's actually been a while since they've discussed him, but that's the only connection that I can possibly see with it. As far as the watches go, there are mechanical, automatic, and battery watches. Mechanical watches are powered by a hand-wound mainspring that stores energy. As the spring unwinds, it drives the gears in the hands of the watch. An automatic watch is a type of mechanical one with a rotor that winds the mainspring using your wrist motion as you're walking. A battery-powered watch has a quartz crystal that oscillates when electrically charged, keeping high accurate time. The newest generation of these are smartwatches. My favorite are automatic watches because you don't have have to wind them just the motion of your wrist as you walk is gonna do that for you there's no electricity inside of it so it's just gonna last forever the maintenance is gonna be a little bit higher and they do get a bit pricey which is the only downsides that I can think of Okay, she finally has some use. The Earth has gone through so many climate changes over the years. Human intervention or not, it's gonna happen. The Sahara Desert used to be a paradise, and then when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, it was really hot. That's how the reptiles thrived. We also went through an ice age, and then the mammals thrived. Very few species are capable of surviving all these events. Most of them are in the water, such as sharks or crocodiles. Sharks are older than trees by over 50 million years. That's something that's just always blown my mind. <laughs> That's really cool. Besides Senku, which bike crew do you guys would think survived the longest in the Amazon? If if you read the manga, then I'm curious to see what you say, but uh, please no spoilers. Is asking someone's weight offensive only in Western culture? Because I I'm Indian, so in Indian and Asian culture, that's completely normal part of the conversation. If a family member that hasn't seen you in a while comes to visit and they say, hey, you're getting kind of fat, time to lose some weight. It, it's just part of the conversation. That's not something that's like, oh my gosh, you shouldn't say that about my son or daughter. And no, it's just, it's just completely normal. Likewise, if you're getting too skinny, then they're gonna say, hey, you should eat more food. What's going on? <laughs> Gen is only worried because he wants to know which part of that he's going to contribute towards. Earlier in this Dr. Stone episode, they mentioned someone who deserves further acknowledgement. This gentleman in question earned a medical degree, but chose manga over medicine, believing he could help more people through storytelling than surgery. In 1963, he brought Astro Boy to television, the first anime series with irregular broadcast episodes and a fixed time slot. He was heavily inspired by Walt Disney, especially Bambi, and gave his characters large, expressive eyes, a style that became a core trait of anime aesthetics. He helped establish shoujo manga for girls and shonen for boys, creating works that appealed to all audiences. He was the hero of several manga writers, including Akira Toriyama, creator of the Dragon Ball series, who described him as a godlike figure. Even Western creators such as Stan Lee of Marvel Comics expressed admiration for this man and his storytelling through character design. 
He produced over 700 manga titles and more than 150,000 pages of work in his lifetime. His name is Osamu Tezuka.